ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋಕೋ
your speech is very sweet your hair is beautiful uh, your bust is very shapely and your very high grace and like that she explains all the good features that one should find in a woman she says that all the those things i i can find in you your eyelashes are bent your lips are very red color so you don't look like a sairandri and tell me who you are and what do you want are you an yaksha yakshi or a devata devi are you a gandharvi or a apsara who are you are you a daughter of devatas or are you a daughter of naga who are you and why have you come here or are you indra's wife are you vishwakarma's wife who who are you and she keeps asking she doesn't believe that this lady who has come is a sairandri and she did not look like a sairandri so draupadi says that i am not a gandharvi or a yakshi or rakshasi or anything i am a sairandri class previously i used to serve for krishna's favorite wife satyabama and also i used to serve with ishtara's wife draupadi in pandava's wife draupadi i used to serve them and draupadi used to call me malini that is maker of the garlands i i used to make her hair i used to serve her and i used to make good garlands flower garlands from the lotus and lilies jasmine and all these things i used to make uh, good garlands and that's why draupadi used to call me malini so sudeshna says that i will keep you uh as as my sairandri uh, but i am worried i'm worried you are so beautiful that if my husband sees you he might want to marry you and he will probably ab- abandon me so this is the jealousy comes in she is worried that if draupadi becomes if any, at any time virata himself sees her he will be attracted and he will probably marry her so draupadi says that neither virata or any person can marry me i am married to five gandharva husbands and they always protect me they are not with, coming with me but they always protect me i am married to them so i would like to um, if if i want to serve you but i have some conditions i will not uh, get touch wash anyone's feet and also i will not touch the food that has been eaten by somebody else so if somebody eat some food and leftovers i won't eat those food and i will not wash so that means the main things that normally a sairandri would do i will not do those things and she also says that if anyone she also asks for protection she says that if anyone comes and uh, does anything to me they should be punished and sudeshna says that as you say uh, you can be my sairandri and i will not let i will not ask you to wash anyone's feet or take food that has already been taken by somebody else so like that draupadi becomes the sairandri starts her work with sudeshna as sairandri and nobody recognized her then sahadev few days later sahadeva comes there with a, uh, a covered dressed like a covered with dialect like a covered speaking like a covered he comes there and looking at him king virata says who are you you don't look like a cow covered who are you i uh, tell me truly who are you and sadeva says that my name is arishtanemi i used to serve in pandavas place and i you i was serving yudhishthira i cannot live without service because pandavas have left kind of prastha now so that's why i'm looking for a job if you can take me i will serve you and then virata says that you must be either a brahmana or a kshatriya you know you look like a king yourself so you don't look like a vaishya who maintains the cows and uh, looks after the cows so you don't look like that sadeva says that yudhishthira had large number of cows he had a division of cows a uh, uh, eight uh, 10800 in one group 10000 in another 20000 in another group like that he had many cattle i used to uh people used to call me tantripala so i i used to look after those uh, cows and maintain them i can tell which cows are going to give milk and i can tell protect them from all the diseases i can look after the bulls as well and and the barren cows which are not 
giving cows, I can I can make them conceive by my with the science I know. So Virata says that I have hundred thousand cows divided into distinct herds and things. So you I will place you in charge of that. So you will be keeping you will keep them. So with that, Sadeva gets his job. Then Arjuna comes. So Arjuna, as we said last week, last time he he comes as dressed as a woman because of his curse he had from Urvashi. He comes there dressed with all the ornaments like a woman with long hair, uh, braided hair, and he comes uh, with bangles of conch shells made of uh, bangles made of conch shells to cover his uh, the marks he had in his hand and fingers and things like that from those uh, bow strings and arrows. So he comes there with that, and then he says that. But he's also shining like Indra uh, himself with that energy he had in him, even though he's looking like a woman. So everybody asking, who is this person? And we never seen them. And then that, then uh, the Arjuna directly goes to Virata and then wearing all this, he says, Virata, he goes there and Virata asks, who are you? Uh, you are, look like somebody who is Devata Celestial himself uh, in you look like walking like a leader of elephant herd with every step, your step, our entire earth is shaking. You have so much energy and strength. Who are you? Uh, you should be riding in a chariot, but you come like a uh, woman. Who are you? And Arjuna says that I sing, dance, play instrument. I am very proficient in dance and songs. So I want to teach all this to Uttara. Your daughter Uttara, I want to teach all this. I want to become her dance master. People know me by name Brahannala, and as I, if I, I, I come here to teach dance and sing music and instruments to Uttara. So Virata says that I will give you what you desire. Uh, you can instruct my daughter, you can become my daughter's teacher. So you can teach her. And then after that, King Virata. Uh, make sure that Brihanala is tested because if he's a man, he can't go into the inner apartments where the ladies stay, he can't go there. They test and all the ladies there, they test and make sure that he is not a man. So they test him and then they take him to the inner apartments where Arjuna starts uh, singing instrumental music and all those things to daughter of Virata, her friends and all the maids there. He starts teaching them uh, by the name of Brihanala, and then all of them were very pleased with him, and like that, he starts spending his time. After a while, King Virata was going around, and there he sees a man with a horse, and that man he was, he was very uh, shining, and he was very looked very handsome. And Virata stops and asks, "Who are you?" And that person says, "I am uh, very well trained in looking after the horses." I, I know very much about the horses, so I want to be a keeper of your horses. And Virata says that I will give you vehicles, chariot, wealth, whatever you want. You look like a king. You don't deserve to be somebody looking after the horse. But Nakula, who was speaking to Virata, says that I used to serve Yudhishthira and I was to look after his horses. And even the vicious horses who were not uh, good for riding and not willing to allowing people to ride. I used to train them and I used to take care of protecting them from diseases and things like that. Even if it is a weak or, uh, uh, horse, I will make them strong and uh, ride. My name is Granthika. And is used to call me by the name Granthika. So Virata says, okay, I have you, whatever the horses I have, you can become the look, you can look after them. And so with that, Nakula gets his job and he starts serving them. Like this, all the five Pandavas, they get their job in Matsya Kingdom. They start serving Virata in different forms. Yudhishthira becomes Ganga, Bhima becomes Ballava in the kitchen, and then Arjuna Sairandri teaching dance, music, instruments, and things like that. Sahadeva becomes Tantripala. He starts 
uh, looking after the cover cows and then nakula becomes glamtika and draupadi sairandri so all of them get their job and start serving king virata and his people his his queen uh, and daughter so janamaja ask what it pandavas do while uh, spending their time there so vaishampana narrates that pandavas dwelt their time there in the matsya worshiping the king himself and by the grace of trinabindu who is the rishi in the dvaitavana and yama himself dharma himself pandavas continued to live there unrecognized in virata yudhishthira worked whatever king virata wanted him he used to do that and he was very skilled in dice game and he used to play continuously in the dice hall with king virata and he used to defeat everybody and uh, he won a lot of wealth and whatever he won he used to distribute among his brothers and bima similarly used to cook all type of uh, food for virata and others and whatever that's left over uh, food that's not served to anybody else he used to give that to his uh, arjuna yudhishthira um, bhima nakula sahadeva and sorry nakula sahadeva draupadi and others arjuna similarly because he used to work with all the ladies in the inner apartments he used to get a lot of used clothes and things like that from those ladies whatever that's not used they used to throw away he used to get that and he used to give that to his brothers and his wife draupadi nakula also shared uh uh, uh was looking after the horses and sahadeva used to give milk and other things to his brothers and his draupadi so like that they lived there and after 3 months have passed during a festival in the matsyas there was a lot of people assembled and things like that at that time uh, king used to honor uh, our wrestling matches so there was a wrestling match where all the wrestlers used to come and fight and among them they were used to challenge one after another and then they used to fight and there was a wrestler called jimuta who was very strong and he used to defeat everybody and even king virata was very much afraid of him and then so virata says that bim ballava so his bima so he tells bima that you go and fight him and bima takes permission and then goes and fights with jimuta huge wrestling match takes place between them with bare arms they fight each other uh pushing and throwing each other and things like that so after a long fight bima lifts him and spins him and throws him on the ground and with that jimuta dies and similarly bima fights the other wrestlers that came there and wins the entire tournament and virata becomes very pleased with him and he gives him all the a lot of wealth and things like that virata gives him and he becomes very pleased so bima was very pleased arjuna similarly uh serves the ladies in the inner apartments by dancing nakula uh pleased virata with with his uh horse training and things like that sahadeva similarly look after all the cows and bulls of uh, king virata as well draupadi always even though she's a queen herself she served um, doing hair and uh, dressing of sudeshna so like that all of them used to live uh, in the kingdom so while they were living like that so after some time what happens was the virata's uh, commander uh, named kichaka he comes to see sudeshna he is sudeshna's brother so he comes there and there he sees draupadi seeing her he becomes attracted to her and he goes to her and says that he asks sudeshna who is this lady uh she maddens me she is so beautiful and he describes her saying okay so i am very much attracted to her and she should not be serving you as a sairandri doing your makeup and your hair and other things doing serving you she should be in beautiful palace she should be my queen my wife she should be riding on elephants and horses and like that chariots and she should be having a good food and drinks things like that so sudeshna thinking that kichaka 
is not going to give up so so sudeshan was thinking like that but kichaka goes to dropati and starts asking her directly who are you and where do you come from uh, what is what you are and starts describing all her uh, features beauty how she is are you lakshmi yourself or are you bhuti or who are you are you rati or indra's wife or who are you and he keeps asking that describing how beautiful she is her from head to toe he describes her and he says that i am very much want to marry you and i will give up all my wives for you and you become my wife so he, hearing this draupadi says that in by desiring me you are inviting your own death don't do that a female servant i am a female servant and you should not speak like this so a person i am already married and you should not that's why look look at me like this a person who is always should never look at another person's wife like this wedded wife like that so if by influence if you do something like that if one does like that then there will be dreadful things will happen to that person so that's why don't do don't speak like this and don't even think like this but kichaka does not listen you should not uh and decline me like this you don't need to serve in this uh queen or anybody you can stay in my luxury uh palace you can stay with all the comfort and you can become my wife and i will give you everything including my life if you want so don't don't you think don't stay decline me don't do what i'm saying and with that draupadi again says that don't act foolishly because if you do anything your life will be in danger so you cannot have me i have gandharvas for my husband so they will kill you if you do anything and she threatens that if you do anything to me or even come near me then your death will come very near but kichaka does not listen he says that i am not afraid of anybody so and he wants but at that time he goes to sudeshna thinking that this brother is not going to listen to anything uh, sudeshna says that you do something you ask you bring a very good quality wine for me to drink and i will send sudesh uh, sairandri to your apartment your palace to get that wine for me and then when she is alone with you you can take her so sudeshna makes this cunning deal with her brother so after that so kichaka brings very good wine and he sends a message to uh, sairandri sorry sudeshna that the wine is ready for collection so sudeshna asks sairandri saying that go and get that wine from kichaka's home get that for me i'm very thirsty and draupadi says that i can't go to kichaka's home place you know what he did last time when he saw me so i can't go there he is a man who uh, does not think and his desires have no limits so i cannot go there kichaka will surely insult me i can't go there so but sudeshna says that if you tell him that i have sent you he will not do any harm to you so go there draupadi with no other option she does she goes to kichaka's home, uh, home but all all the along she says that as you know i have my husbands and uh, so even though she's while going she thinks that even if i have very strong husbands but nothing can save me now except my dharma whatever the dharma i am following the chastity dharma i am following that's the only thing i can that can save me and with that she worships surya on her way and surya becomes very pleased and surya sends a rakshasa to protect invisible draupadi invisibly so that rakshasa always stays with draupadi protecting her so when draupadi reaches uh, kichaka's place kichaka gets up and he becomes uh, he comes to her and he says that you're welcome this is a very auspicious day for me you have come here 
uh, all these gold chains, gold chains, and all the earrings, everything I have made for you. All the rubies, gems, silk clothes, deer skins, everything I brought for you. All this for you. This bed is prepared for you. Come, come and sit with me and drink wine with me. So, this made from the sunny flower. Let's drink this wine and come and sit with me. Draupadi says that I've been sent by the queen to collect the wine for her. She is exceedingly thirsty. Give me that wine. I have to go. Kichaka says that other maids will carry that wine to the queen. Don't worry. You don't have to go. You stay here. And Draupadi says, even when I am uh, out of senses, I never thought any anybody else as my husband. So, uh, if you do, I have to. I will go now. So, if you do anything, I will see you dead soon. And with that, she prepares to leave. But Kichaka immediately seizes her arm and he pulls her. And Draupadi becomes very angry. She pushes him, and with that, he falls down to earth. And when he falls down, he becomes very angry. And while he was on the ground, Draupadi starts running from there and she comes directly to Virata's assembly. And there she comes, Kijaka comes chasing her and he gets hold of her with her hair and he pulls her by her hair and then pushes her and uh, beats her up. So Kijaka, with that, at that time, that Rakshasa who was protecting Draupadi pushes that Kichaka into the ground and with that Kichaka becomes falls on the ground senseless. Both Yudhishthira and Bhima were at that assembly and Bhima becomes very angry. His teeth started, he starts biting his teeth, his forehead covered in sweat and wrinkles appear in his head and his, his face, he starts, becomes very angry and he becomes prepared to go and beat Kichaka. At that time, Yudhishthira looks at Bhima and makes a sign not to do anything. And he says, tells Bhima that you go and uh, you go and uh, you go and uh, look for the fuel. Okay, look for any trees or things like that for your fuel, for your cooking. Go and do that. And when Yudhishthira says that Bhima leaves that place, but Draupadi, weeping at that place uh, in that assembly, says, this Kichak has kicked me, and he tried, even though I'm married, he tries to force me, and he's, he's, uh, I, he, he, he's not listening, and he tried to harm me. So uh, even when she says that, nobody... Uh, and she, she asks Virata, is this how you do the your kingdom? Is it how you run your kingdom? Is Kichaka does not deserve punishment because of what he has done and things like that? She asks questions Virata. And Virata, she asks help from Virata at that time. So Virata says that I don't know the full details. I'm just hearing what you are saying. So I need to understand the other side of the story before I make any decisions. And then Draupadi explains everything that happened and hearing that, everybody in that assembly agrees with Draupadi and says that Kichaka has done wrong. But so at that time, Yudhishthira stops, jumps in, and he says that, O Sairandri, go back to your apartment. Go and serve Sudeshna. The wives of your heroes you mentioned, the, Gand the Gandharva heroes you mentioned, your husbands, they will definitely they definitely think that this is not the right time to act. They probably will come and take their actions when the time is right. So you wait for the time and go now. So do not spend time here talking about all the things that happened and blabbering here. Go back to your apartment. Your husbands definitely know that all these things have happened because they are Gandharvas. They know all these things happened. So you go back now. And hearing this, Draupadi agreeing to that. So she says that I am wedded wife and but what to do? My husband 
one of my husband is very much addicted to dyes and because of that i'm suffering like this and saying this she leaves her place and goes back to sudeshna and she goes there and sudeshna asks as if she doesn't know anything she asks who insulted you what happened why are you crying and all these things and draupadi says that i went to bring the wife but kichaka struck me in the court in the very presence of the king in front of everybody sudeshna says that this kichaka is maddened by lust and is insulted you and i will make him dead i will give him the punishment but actually she was just trying to console draupadi as because she was worried that draupadi already told her that her husband sir gandhar was uh, so she was trying to say i will take action you don't need to do anything so don't worry i will take action against this but draupadi says that you don't need to do anything because he will he has wronged me so because he will go to emma's place this very day he will go you don't need to do anything and with that draupadi uh doesn't say anything more and she all night she was sitting there and thinking that night what to do what i am to do what i have to do where do i go next and then she thinks about re bima and there is no one else apart from bima who can save me from this when i'm in trouble so she decides to go to bima and she goes there in the kitchen where bima was sleeping on the floor she sees him and he was in deep sleep and she thinks how can this my husband sleep like this when i am crying and he has seen all the things that happened how can he get such a good sleep and but she goes near bima and hugs him and then starts crying and she says that wake up wake up bima why are you like sleeping like here like a dead person do you not suffer from what has happened to your wife are you not even not even thinking about that is that why you are sleeping like this so bima wakes up and he says that what purpose you have come here why have you come here you you are crying a lot your eyes have become red why have you come here uh, what has happened and draupadi then starts explaining all the things that happened she says that what can i tell about my grief what are what can i tell about my sorrows that pratikram and if you remember in the kuru dice assembly that pratikram and who came there and asked uh, dushasana then came and dragged her right so he came and pratikram and said that i am a slave and that grief still burning me and when i was in the forest sindhu king jayadratha he dragged me he insulted me and that still burns me and now this kichaka in the in front of matsya king he insulted me and he kicked me in front of everybody and that what what more can i go through and this kichaka who is a brother in law of virata is a commander of all the forces every day addresses me to come to his place and become his wife and he's every day harassing me and even nobody is able to do your elder brother is addicted to dice and he every day he spends time in playing dice and he doesn't even care about me so that gambler he lost everything your elder brother lost everything by addicting because of that addiction to game dice game he even if he had gambled day and night every day if he has gambled every time he lost one nishka that is let's say one coin if he had lost but even by a thousand coin he has lost he still would have had all his silver gold his wealthy clothes vehicles chariots everything he would have had still that he had so much wealth in him but he lost everything in one go in one dice game he lost everything so what can i tell what can i tell about all this and uh, what my grief is like that yudhishthira who was the king of indraprastha who was looking after looked after by thousands and thousands of people and he so used to serve uh thousands of people maid servants every day used to serve him uh he used to feed and feed hundreds of thousands of guests guests every day atithis every day 
snathaka brahmanas uh, 100000 uh, 10000 every day he used to feed in golden bricks such yudhishthira now playing as a dice uh, in, in uh, pleasing you virata he is playing the dice game and serving another king that yudhishthira who used all the kings of the world used to come and worship him bow their head that king is now serving matsya so what can i tell about my grief and she says that these are all my grief in my head so she is angry that you just uh, lost everything in dice game but also she is sorrow she is sorrowful and she is crying for you this uh, her current situation what his suffering the suffering you this is going through and she says again that king who you rule the entire earth is now serving and he is worshiping another person uh, he you was to be worshiped by everybody and that such a king is looking at him every day i agree and then what can i tell about you who you became the cook who used to serve everybody uh, who you could uh, the, the man of 10000 elephant strength you are serving now as a cook in this here similarly i have become a maid servant of this sudeshna i used to serve nobody and today look at me i'm serving this as a sirandri i'm serving here women it's very hard to serve uh, except kunti i have not served anybody and now i have to serve this so similarly she talks about arjuna who burnt the kandava who is uh, in he went to heaven and got all the celestial weapons and that arjuna now wearing bangles and bracelets and uh, made of conch shells and he has a long hair on his head and wearing a female like a female of a third sex he is living in that in her apartments teaching virata's daughter the music and became a dance master so and she says that my mother in law kunti if she ever sees arjuna in this situation she will give up her life if she ever sees yudhishthira in this situation she will give up her life and sahadeva who is looking after the cows or nakula in looking after the horses if kunti ever sees this them in this situation she will give up her life she says remains remembers that kunti always said sahadeva he should be looked after he is very shy but that sahadeva is now serving here so she explains all the miseries they are going through and she shows him the bristles uh, that has uh, come up in her hand looking after by doing the sandal paste and things like that so she explains all that and these are all my griefs and then she explains that uh, this is i am suffering now with all this happening i'm suffering and then she says that so at sudeshna's command i have to go there but i am living in this because i there is i'm hoping that the cycle of happiness and sorrow comes in a cyclic way i'm hoping that prosperity will come i'm hoping that all this will end soon and because of that i'm waiting but if this kichaka continues i will give up my life and she says that i can't continue any more if kichaka continues to trouble me like this i will give up my life so we'll take a pause there and we'll look at what happens next in the next time. any questions